all right guys today we have to start with indian penal code part 5 without any further delay let's get started with this lecture today we have to start our discussion with criminal misappropriation of property which is a very simple topic first of all we will be starting this topic from section 403 and we will be ending this topic on 404 without any further delay let's quickly understand this topic what does this topic really have to say about the law of criminal misappropriation of property let's understand this with a very good story let's say that there are two neighbors named there are two neighbors named a and there is another neighbor called b now one day what happens that a purchases a new car and the car is a really brand new car and it's a very good looking car now what happens that b got jealous of that car he is a very jealous person now one day when a wasn't at home when day when a wasn't at home b come near to his car and carefully watches this car carefully watches this car this car is a very nice car he just makes the, his eyes a laser and the car is very nice now what really he does that he says that nice car let's drive it he got a duplicate key of the car he goes on a drive and met with an accident now this is really embarrassing he says oh no what really i have done this is nothing but criminal misappropriation of property sir how does it criminal misappropriation of property because a has taken that property and it's a offense now it's an offense so it will be covered under a topic called criminal misappropriation of property now without any further affair now either without any further deal let's continue our story now when e comes to know that he files fir against b now first of all this offense is covered under criminal misappropriation of property now on what section judge can punish b on what section judge can punish b under section 403 b was punished because he has misappropriated he has misappropriated a's property so that's what criminal misappropriation of property says that whoever misappropriates another property which he doesn't own or converts that property he or she will be punished under section 403 so that was section 4 under section 403 b was punished now we need to understand what does section 403 deeply says in this topic okay now who ever dishonestly misappropriates or converts to his own use any movable property shall be punished with the imprisonment of either description means the maximum imprisonment for criminal misappropriation of property is 2 years or with fine or with both that means extend means the max that can a judge can give the prescribed punishment the second thing is what does dishonesty mean dishonesty means uh, dishonesty means wrong intention of causing wrongful gain to another person and misappropriation means the intentional illegal use of the property or funds of another person so that's what we have to say now let's quickly revise what did we study there were two person named a and b b took the property of a which was car and he met with an accident and the car was completely damaged and this was covered under criminal misappropriation of property because he took car without permission second he damaged that car and illegally he just get that car okay so that's why he was covered under criminal misappropriation of property and under section 403 he was punished so that is the thing here now moving on moving on is a dishonest misappropriation let's quickly get into the deep of this section a dishonest misappropriation dishonest means for a time only is an appropriation within the time of meaning of this section let's understand this with a very quick example let's say that A finds a government promise and belonging to Z bearing a blank endorsement A knowing that the note belongs to Z pledges it with a banker as a security loan intending at a future time to restore it to Z so what really happens here there is a person named A he found a government promissory note from which from which from which he can write his name and can get the money so A without any dishonest intention go to the bank and cash the check and in cash the promissory note and thinks that after i will use the cash after i will use the cash i am going to return the amount to z now here he could easily give it to z but he didn't now he will be punished or not here a has committed an offense under this section why because here it is clearly written that a dishonest misappropriation for a time only is a misappropriation within the meaning of this section so that is what written here now let's get to the explanation two of this section a person who finds property not in the possession of any other person and takes such property for the purpose of protecting it for or of restoring it to the owner doesn't take or misappropriate or dishonestly and is not guilty of an offense so this is nothing but for example you found a bag you just hand it over to the to the relevant authorities that whoever come for searching for it they 
gave it to you. so there you haven't done any offense but until and unless how much time you will get but he is guilty of an offense about defined if he appropriates means if you convert that property for your own use then you will be guilty of that offense for example let's take a quick example this is a very quick example sorry just give me a second let's say that there is a person called a and a has found a gold bar okay a has found a gold bar he has found a gold bar now he does nothing but get to his home he comes to his home okay now he has come to his home happily sitting with the gold bar he has the gold bar in his hand so he does nothing but he goes to the goldsmith he goes to the goldsmith and ask him that uh, convert this gold bar into a jewelry convert this gold bar into a jewelry so here he has done an offense that he has converted the property for his own use or even if he sells that gold bar even if he sells that gold bar he has committed an offense why why he has committed offense because he neither first of all first of all let understand try to understand my dear friends first of all in the position of and take such property for the purpose he has not protected the property he protected the property but did not hand it over to the relevant authority did not restore it to the and does not take on mr but he has misappropriated it dishonest so that is the example that i wanted to give you here now moving on what are reasonable means what are reasonable means or what is reasonable time in such case like it is reasonable to take the property and, re, uh, and hand it over to the audio, uh, relevant authority it is not necessary that the finder should know who is the owner of such property or that any particular person the best example is a finds a rupee on higher road not knowing to whom the rupee belongs a picks up the rupee he has not committed the offense defined in this section until and unless he has misappropriated the property and has used for his own good but if he is not able to find the owner then he can keep it without uh, handing to the relevant authority because uh, because no one is gonna know okay so there are two things necessary before an offense under section 4 or 3 can be established the first is firstly that the property must be misappropriated or converted to the use of the accused for proving an uh, person uh, guilty under 4 or 3 first that property must be misappropriated or converted to the secondly that he must appropriate or convert it dishonestly following are the case laws that bagiram dome versus abbar dome bagiram dome versus abbar dome versus uh, state yudhar versus state of jharkhand these are the important case law that you can give reference in your answers okay i am not going to explain those cases in deep to you because they are not very much important for the explanation purpose of this chapter now moving on now let's understand what is section 404 dishonest misappropriation of property possessed by a deceased person at the time of his death first of all what do you understand this by this first of all i see that dishonest misappropriation dishonest misappropriation of property let's stop here dishonest misappropriation of property means someone has misappropriate the property of someone else for his own use now possessed by deceased person at the time of his death possessed by deceased person at the time of his death mean means the property was holded by property was hold, holded by a deceased person now the property should go to his servant or his legal heir. obviously the legal heir should own that property so let's understand this section 404 whoever dishonestly misappropriates or converts to his own use property knowing that such property was in possession of a deceased person at the time of that person date and has since been the possession of any person legally means the person has died the property is over there and he should hand it over to the person legally entitled to such position if he doesn't do that and he, he misappropriates the property or own that property for his own use or still that property shall be punished with the imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to three years means the maximum is this and she'll also be liable to find if the offender at the time of search was employed by means 
and shall also be and if the offender at the time of such person death was employed by him as a clerk then prison may extend to seven years means if you are a stranger you will get this punishment and if you are a clerk or something the prison may extend to seven years that's what section 404 says that means the property first of all is holded by a death de dead person and it should be handed over to the legal hire but if anyone misappropriates that property means de illegally own that property illegally uh, possess that property so that when section 404 will be applied now moving on let's understand what really is criminal breach of trust this is one of the very interesting topic that you will study now what does section 405 says about criminal breach of trust whoever being in any manner interested with the property means uh, the property is handed to another pro another person with the trust that he will take care of that property with or having doni dominion over property means a right dishonestly misappropriates or converts to his own use that the property or dishonestly uses or dispose that property in violation of any direction of law means the law prescribes a particular kind of steps to dispose of that property but it is not followed the mode in which the trust is to be discharged or of any legal contract express or imply in which he has made touching the discharge of trust uh, such trust or willfully suffers means uh, make forces any person to do that property to be damaged he has committed criminal breach of trust sir we haven't understand anything from this we haven't understand let's take a quick example to understand this let's say that there is a there is a what factory and in the factory there must be some workers and if there are some workers there must be a boss of them now the boss says to workers that i will deduct 200 rupees from each of your salary each and every month so that i can deposit that amount in the employee state insurance fund so that was the proposal of the boss to the employees so that is nothing wrong here but what will be wrong here is that a but he uses money for his own benefit because he was interested with the money but if he uses that money for his own benefit that is nothing but criminal breach of trust because let's understand this with a very quick points the first is the accused must be interested with the property the factory boss was interested with the property that the money should go to the state insurance fund next, next thing is that the person so interested must use that property means he has used the property for his own benefit dishonestly he has a bad intention that he will not deposit that in the state insurance fund the next is of any direction of law these are the criminal breach of trust of any direct prescribing the more trust to be discharged he had to deposit in state insurance fund that is nothing but written here of any legal contract made during for example if there is contract between a and b and and there was a trust between them that the goods will be delivered so that is nothing but violation of any legal contract means a trust has been broken now let's understand punishment for criminal breach of trust whoever commits so i will only read the punishment you can read the complete paragraph for punishment of criminal breach of trust three years or with fine or with vote that is the punishment section 406 says that section 407 says that whoever being interested property as a carrier he shall be punished with the seven year and shall also be liable up to fine okay that is the maximum punishment now let's understand criminal breach of trust by clerk or servant what is the punishment here here seven year and shall also be liable to find same punishment if the criminal breach of trust is done by public servant or by a banker or merchant or agent he shall be punished with the imprisonment up to 10 years and shall all why they are punished with the why there are different punishment because clerk or servant are trusted people and also public servant is someone who is been trusted with the greater responsibility that's why the punishment is even greater which may extend to 10 years and shall also be liable to fine the person should have a fiduciary relationship means whoever has been interested with the property should have fiduciary relationship okay and the fiduciary relations have been classified as public servant bankers factors brokers attorneys means lawyers and agents now let's talk about an important topic called cheating so here is the definition of cheating but before that understand that cheating will start from section 1415 to 420 of the indian penal code 1860 which will be dealing with the offense related to the cheating now let's get to the definition of cheating cheating definition is covered under section 415 you may pause the video and read this complete definition because the definition isn't asked in exam many times but i still recommend you to read this definition it's a very 
easy definition make sure you pause the video and read the definition i hope you have paused the video now let's take a quick example related to cheating let's say that there are two people here you see the two people here there is a who pretends to be in the civil service and intentionally deceives z who is a girl sales girl here and thus in dishonestly intends induces z to let him have goods on credit means what has been done here is that a pretends to be in civil office civil service and make sure that z and assures z that i am in civil service i am gonna pay you back soon but he dishonestly deceive z so here a has cheated here a cheats let's understand what are the main ingredients of cheating here what has been cheating ingredients has been followed here the first thing is a deception of any person a has gone to that bookstore to deceive z a fraudulent or dishonest inducing that person to deliver any property or to consent that person shall return any property so that is nothing but a foreign insurance that person means uh, cheating means to deliver any property means to uh, get in someone's mind influence him to deliver any property which is cheating and not doing any payment it can also be done that it's a very easy thing intentionally inducing that person to do means intentionally he has made z to give goods him to give goods to him on credit okay if you were not so deceived and which act or means causes likely to cause damage or harm to that person in your body mind reputation to that property now let's understand what is cheating by personation the perfect example is here here a pretends to be in civil service a pretends to be in civil service so he has done nothing but cheated by personation as per section 16 a person is said to cheat by personation if he cheats by pretending to be some other person or by knowing substituting one person for another or representing that he or any other person is a person other than he or such person is really is the offense is committed whether the individual personated is a real or imaginary person. Here, he has committed as an imaginary person to be in civil services. Okay. Now, let's understand what are the punishment related to cheating. What are covered under section 407? Shall be punished with, for simple cheating, you will be punished with one year or with fine or with both. Under section 4, a whoever said that he's whoever know that he is gonna cheat with the likely to cause wrongful loss to a person who's interested in the transaction, he shall be gone to jail for three years or with fine or with both. Now let's understand section 419. Whoever cheats by personation shall be punished with the imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to three years or with fine or with both. Section 420, where whoever cheats and thereby dishonestly induces the person deceived to deliver any property to any or to make, alter, or destroy the whole or any part of the valuable security. Now, Section 420 applies when? When there is a question of valuable security. Okay. Now, for personation, the imprisonment is three years or with fine or with both. For simple cheating, 417 will be applied but for valuable security where valuable security or destruction of valuable securities involved the 420 will apply and he shall be given an imprisonment up to seven years and shall also be liable to five now here is the end of our lecture if you want to join our telegram group these are the benefits that you can get by joining our telegram group that is nothing but exclusive notes will be shared next link will be shared there fair discussion will be held Latest today announcement of ICSI will be shared there. Scanner books, links, and many more will be there. And link available to do no download notes of ICSI will also be there in our Telegram group. Link will be available in the description box as well as in the comments box of the video. Now, if you want to open a free demat account, link will be available in the description box of the video where you can open your free demat account. That's it for today's guys. I hope to see you in the next one.